Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Food Heals Podcast, episode 153. When we ask, we will always receive the answers. But it's our commitment and our willingness to receive that is required of us to actually be led and take the actions that are being presented to us. It's our responsibility to take action from a place of listening. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you've experienced any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet to Kardashian immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. And it's the first day of our Spirit Junkie podcast series. You heard the prequel with Allison Miko last week about how not to freak out. And in the series, we're going to be talking to people who have changed their lives and healed themselves through their spiritual practices. And I can think of no better guest to kick this off than Spirit Junkie author herself, Gabby Bernstein. That's right. Gabrielle Bernstein is the number one New York Times bestselling author of The Universe Has Your Back and has written four additional bestsellers. The Universe Has Your Back is literally one of my favorite books. First, I listened to it as an audiobook, and now I'm reading it for a second time, the physical copy. So, I mean, you loved it, right? I loved it. And I was skeptical because I've read a lot, a lot of books, a lot of metaphysical books, self-help books, spiritual books. And that was the one I chose. I got the audible version mm -hmm. of her of her reading it, and it was awesome. I am definitely a spirit junkie myself now. She, I got I got a lot out of it. Yeah, I got a lot out of it. It's a really good one. And if you're just starting, you can kind of start from the beginning. I read all her books because I have been a spirit junkie for a little too long, so I wasn't skeptical. I was like, when does the next one come out? <laughs> so I'm always excited when she has something new, and. If you don't know who Gabby is, she was featured on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday as a next generation thought leader, and the New York Times has named her a new role model. And of course, as I talk about a lot, I've taken her spirit junkie trainings, levels one and two, and those trainings are geared towards spiritual and wellness preneurs. And this spring, I actually got to take the first ever level three, which was a mastermind. So we got to sit down one on one with Gabby. There was five of us and create a vision and make a plan to take our businesses to the next level. And you guys, these trainings have totally changed my life and really helped my business exponentially. Exponentially? Exponentially. That's a lot. I know. Today, we're also going to tell you how you can watch Gabby's brand new free training series, which consists of three incredible videos entitled, The Three Steps to Own Your Confidence and Get Into Action Now. Yes. <laughs> the three major blocks to your abundance and how to fix them. It's very one. important. Yes. And the number one way to stand out and make an impact doing what you love. I'm literally obsessed with all of those topics. And video one comes out today, or it came out today. So you can get all the goods at foodhealsnation.com slash Gabby. And stay tuned to the end of this episode because we have some special announcements for you, Food Heals Nation, on how to join the Spirit Junkie tribe and transform your health and your wealth and your happiness and your happiness so mm -hmm. stay tuned for that next up our interview with gabby the food hills podcast starts now she appears regularly as an expert on the dr oz show and co-hosted the guinness world record largest guided meditation with deepak chopra 
In January 2018, Gabby launches her sixth book entitled Judgment Detox. I really need that one. Yeah, I need that one too. <laughs> Welcome, Gabby. Welcome, Gabby. Hi, guys. Super happy to be with you. Oh, we're so happy to have you here. Yes, this has been a long time coming. So let's start with your personal wellness journey, which I know that you share in your books as well. So everyone go pick up a copy of Spirit Junkie. You will learn all of this. But Gabby, how did you get started? I have been on this path uh, as a self-proclaimed spirit junkie for 12 years now, almost 12 years now. And it all began when I hit my own bottom at the age of 25. I had a quarter life crisis where I, I, I really did hit a big bottom. I was at the time running my own PR business where I represented nightclubs and restaurants. And I was living a very fast paced city lifestyle that led me down some pretty dark roads. And I had always had sort of a bit of an addictive personality and I was running from a lot of fear as we all do and we all have our own unique ways of dealing with that fear. And for me, it was a lot of forms of running, whether it be through relationships or workaholism. And eventually it led to drug addiction and alcoholism, which by the grace of God really helped me hit my knees and, and hit bottom when I was 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And in that bottom where was a great awakening for me. And it was the time where I had looked at my life and decided that that was not the path that I was meant to be on. And I made a commitment to get sober uh, in October of 2005, so 11 and a half years ago, and very quickly started to return to my spiritual faith and create and establish a spiritual connection of my own understanding. And in that experience of, of, of returning to my beliefs of spirituality and healing myself physically and emotionally... I began to get very clear that it was part of my life's mission to share what I was experiencing and learning. And very quickly, I started, I started giving talks and coaching people and just, just really getting, getting out there very publicly about what I was going through. And little did I know that would become my career, uh, although it happened very fast. Um, but I, I think it was almost like it was, it was just, just saying yes to that calling, the desire to do something propels you forward and all that you need is around you and established for you when you're in that kind of momentum. And that was the case for me because I was so excited and inspired by everything that I was learning and experiencing on my own that I had to share it with others. So Gabby, do you think that that was part of your soul contract or part of what you were meant to experience in order that you could heal yourself and then help heal others? Absolutely. I, I believe in, and Allison knows this, and she's been one of my students for a long time. I mean, I believe that it's our stories that heal and that it's our transformational stories of where we were, what happened and how we got to this place of resurrection, for lack of a better word, that heal other people. And so I would, I look back very fondly on all of the discomfort in my life. And I recognize the wounds as the awakening and the lessons as my great expertise. If I had not gone through these difficult times, whether it be healing addiction or healing from trauma or healing from workaholism and just going through these different thresholds of discomfort and coming out the other side, I may not be able to teach with it with the level of authenticity that I can teach with. So I don't look back on my discomfort with anything but gratitude. And can I ask you what it was when you hit bottom that brought you up? Because I, I don't even know. I know when I hit bottom and I don't even know how I came out of it, but I know I did. And I would love to hear like how you articulate what happened. Was it a spiritual awakening? Well, ultimately, it was the combination of the desire to change, which is the really the invitation. Mm -hmm. So you ask when you want something to change, you ask, you're sending out a message, you're sending out a, a universal memo, hey, I need to do things differently, help me. <laughs> and then with that desire to change, a commitment, and that level of commitment, and, and, a, and a level of receptivity as well. Because ultimately, the, whenever we say the words, there has to be a better way, or in my case, I need a miracle, which is <laughs> literally the words I use, we will always receive an answer. But it's our commitment and our willingness to receive that is required of us to actually be led and take the actions that are being presented to us. So when we ask, we will always receive the answers but it's our responsibility to take action from a place of listening. Oh my God, tweet that Food Heals Nation. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even repeat it. It was so good. 
go back and tweet that to at Gabby Bernstein. And so you've really turned your pain into your purpose. And now you're helping other people do that. That's what, you know, Spirit Junkie Masterclass is all about and what you're really empowering people like us to do. How can we turn our pain and turn our trauma into something greater and transform it? I believe at first it comes down to accepting and honoring your wounds, just honoring the discomfort that's happened in your life and honoring all that you've been through and seeing that discomfort and the and the obstacles as the opportunities to grow and learn and to really shift and become wiser and to become an expert in your own healing. And when you accept those uncomfortable experiences, whether it be a physical diagnosis or a traumatic event or an addiction, that you can come out of those experiences witnessing the discomfort as the awakening, as the breaking point, as the place where the light enters you, as Rumi says, that the wound is the place where the light enters you. And really owning that and really accepting that. And so when you see your discomfort from a place of purpose, you start to bring purpose to not to the pain, but you bring purpose to the outcome, you bring purpose to the, to the journey, then you can step out of it and see that there was great meaning in all that you've been through. And you can be grateful for your path. And most importantly, you can use it to be of service to others. I love that so much, Susie. I feel like she's channeling you right now. She always, Susie always says, it's your sacred wound. Mm-hmm. And I and 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 Gabby actually, I was going to ask a question. I'm like, no, she just answered it. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just listen. And I, because I am myself, am practicing <laughs> listening more deeply, active listening on many levels. And what I was going to ask is like, so what if you? I've had some experiences, Gabby, where I, I have heard that before. I have read that before. I know about sacred wounds. I know that like the places that you are broken are where you can grow the most, or you can mm-hmm. and can you can help other people that either are going to deal with that or have dealt with that. And some of them, I had some of these experiences I struggle with because I'm like, God, that really freaking sucked. And I get resistance to accepting that I can learn from that experience or that I can own it and accept it. I get I get resistance. Well, to look, it. you're like, what the fuck was the purpose of that? Yes. Let's be honest. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to have that resistance. Like, why now? Why do I have to go through this? And And then there's some circumstances in life that are so devastating, like the loss of a loved one or something that you just can't get your head around. But we have choices in life and we can can choose to perceive our circumstances as an opportunity to grow or we can choose to perceive our circumstances as an opportunity to stay stuck. And so I've chosen growth. You guys have chosen growth. You wouldn't be doing this work if you haven't. And and I believe anyone listening to this show has chosen growth because they wouldn't be interested in this content if they hadn't. So it's not that we can change necessarily the experiences that we have, but we can change our experience of our experiences. And that happens through the choices that we make in our perceptions. Are we going to choose to perceive our world through the lens of growth? Are we going to choose to be blocked and stay stuck and be in fear? These are choices we have to make daily, where every day we're, we're faced with more reasons, more resistance, more, more feelings of fear and discomfort, and more obstacles. And it's our choice to, to show up for them with an attitude of, of appreciation and an attitude of grace, or show up for them with more fear. I'm so glad you brought this up. And I just want to say, uh, for where I'm at right now, it is a daily choice. Every day I have to choose growth. And there are some days where I choose to stay stuck and I start blaming the world and I start blaming whoever and my life is annoying me at the moment, my client, my husband, whatever. Okay. And I'm choosing in that moment to stay stuck because I'm deciding external circumstances are creating my current reality. And that is not the truth. And I know that, but I still sometimes fall victim to it. So I have to more often than not choose growth than being stuck. And that's a choice I make every day. And one day I'll get to Gabby level where I choose growth every day. <laughs> well, I have to say, I have been listening to Gabby's audiobook, The Universe Has Your Back. Love it. Which I love, which I felt resistant to, of course. Because I wouldn't stop <laughs> talking about it because I was obsessed No. With it. <laughs> well, first of all, the title, Gabby, I have to say, I feel like you wrote that title specifically for me. So thank mm-hmm. you. Um, because that is something that I struggle with, choose, uh, literally choosing faith over fear. 
Yeah. Um, and this ties into what I was just saying earlier. Certain experiences have left me where I was just like, man, you know, sometimes I don't have that faith. But there's a few things that, a few lines that, that you read so beautifully in your book. Choose joy. Choose that moment of joy. You can choose joy. It's a choice. Yeah. Even when you're stuck. Gabby's the, the example of stuck in traffic. As well as like, uh, this one I also really loved. If you're stuck in the dark, grab a flashlight. I'm paraphrasing it, mm-hmm. but I thought those were pretty. Um, so just, yeah, just like you were talking about, it's like you can choose that even when you're mad. You can still have your anger. You can choose mm-hmm. that joy on top of it, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I've been really um, taken aback and, and humbled by the work of Abraham Hicks. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Esther Hicks and the work that she does with the, with the Abrahams. And the work is all the law of attraction work, and it's just all about taking ownership of the world that we're creating. A, a lot of it is infused in, in what I've been teaching for a decade and, and the work that's in the book and, and all of my books. But I've been taking it to the next level lately, and a lot of it to me is just like really making our happiness our priority and making our, our good feeling energy the most important priority. Every day we're given reasons to be taken out, silly things, right? Like today I, um, I do like a, like a blood work test for life, for life insurance policy, right? Uh-huh. And they come over your house and you're not supposed to eat anything before you take the blood work. And I took like, I drank my shake or something mm-hmm. and I drank my shake and I might've even had like a bulletproof coffee or something in the morning. <laughs> and my cholesterol levels, which never in my a million years were, we have never been an issue, came back like a little bit on a higher side. Hmm. Nothing like overly alarming, but high enough that I'm going to go get it retested. And I'm like almost 99% confident that this was like just drinking like butter before they took it. <laughs> <laughs> Hot butter. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Um, but like, but like it literally put me into a tailspin in my head. You know what I mean? Why do I have high cholesterol? But like going crazy. And I had like, I had been, t- it takes me out even, even with all these tools. So I, I say that to your listeners because like I've been teaching spiritual principles for a, over a decade. I've written six books on the topic of ch- how to change your perceptions and I can still get taken out with like a faulty blood test. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if it is a real blood test, like I, that still shouldn't take me out. You know, it should be, it should be solution oriented and focusing on my wellness rather than illness. Right. But it's very easy even for the teacher to be taken out. And so I just want to be like, really, like really honor everyone for where they are on their journey and just to respect that, that every day there's different obstacles that throw us into terror and fear and, and, and like scary, scary outcomes in our minds. And it's really our job to maintain a strong spiritual foundation in order to stay steady amongst these difficult things that show up in the world, especially just even being alive at this time, just turning on the news and seeing what's happening in the world. It's a big job to stay on top of our vibration. And this is what I love about you over a lot of other um, spiritual teachers or gurus or what have you and why I'm your dedicated student. It's because of exactly that. You came to LA and you did a talk there and I volunteered and you walked in on stage and you're about to give this like beautiful spiritual talk and you told the truth that you when you came in, you were like, this is a fucking shit show. Why are there people in cars everywhere? Like, it's real. It's honest. And how you had to get over that in that moment to get up on stage. And then you told us about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'd rather tell you about it. And I think that that's another really great tool, actually, is just acknowledging your shadow actually brings it to the light. So Mm. by saying it out loud, right, just bringing light to it by bringing it to the surface. And you know, that is probably one of the most transformational tools I could offer you guys today. Because when we keep it to ourselves and we're in the shame and the silence of our own discomfort, it emanates from our physical vibration and people can feel it anyway. So you might as well just say it. This is what's up for me right now. And I mean, listen, if I can say these things in front of 500 to 1,000 people just, or right now on this podcast, the thousands of people, you know, here's how I screw up here's how I detour into fear, then you can say it to your, your husband or your sister or your coworker, you know, and just bring your shadows to the light. And speaking of transformational tools, you've got your free video series and the first video is coming out today, Food Heals Nation. Yes. So tell us about that. 
And so, you know, I've, I've been in this field for a long time, as you know, and I've been the witness of a lot of amazing people like you, Allison, and like both of you, actually. It's like seeing so many people having their own personal transformations, whether it be through food or whether it be through spiritual awakening, where they're realizing, okay, wait, my pain, my pain doesn't have to be a sentence. My pain can actually be my purpose and I can really turn it into a mission driven life that I want to live. And many people have also been called to bring those principles into their careers. And so I started to see this happening around me and I wanted to create a training to help people gain the confidence and take action and clear any blocks to abundance yeah. and to really learn how to get their message out in a very meaningful way. And so I'm, I'm putting today, it's, it's such good timing, is launching this free training series where I the first video is um, the three steps to own your confidence and get into action right now. And the second video is about the three major blocks to your abundance and how you can fix them. And then the third video is really all about how you can stand out and make an impact doing the things that you love. And so I've got this real passion for helping people bring more purpose into their lives, whether it be their personal lives or their career, and really owning their confidence so that they can start to do the thing that they've been dreaming of. These are really important topics to me, and I've brought them to life in this gorgeous training. It's like three 20 to 30 minute videos that you just get to just enjoy and to begin to step into that action right away. So I'm glad that you guys are sharing that. Thank you for that. Of course. I mean, it really, really has helped me and changed my perspective that, you know, there's a lot of fear about doing what you love and getting paid for it. And yes, uh, right. Okay. <laughs> so Food Deals Nation, if you're listening to this and you're like, I feel that just like Susie just, you know, articulated, she feels that it is our responsibility to give our gifts to the world, to tell our stories. Gabby, can you talk a little bit about that and why it is not okay to accept money for our gifts? It is imperative. It's imperative, right? Yeah. Well, look, you know, if I hadn't, let me give you just as an example. Like if I hadn't accepted a book advance and written the book Spirit Junkie, hundreds of thousands of people would not be sober today because I accepted that this was work I needed to do. I accepted a book advance to do that work. I accepted abundance to get that book out on a book tour. And I made it my mission. And that book, amongst all of my books, I believe have helped people change their lives. But that one in particular has saved lives. It's, you know, I, I see people at every single talk I give, I'd say at least 5%, 10% of the audience will come up to me during the book signing and say, Spirit Junkie got me sober. I'm alive today because of it. So let's Let's get real here, right? It's like the stories that we tell, the work that we're doing is not just inspiring people, but in some cases, saving lives. And I know you guys are doing the same in the work that you're doing. It's when you start to just adjust your focus and give people support and tell your story, you can change someone's life. And so this becomes not just about how can I have this like really fun career and how can I feel like I'm being seen and heard, but much more about how can I be of service in a way that's going to have a really big impact on the world and, and, a, and a world that's suffering and a world that's traumatized and a world that's unwell and a world that needs more transformational teachers and leaders. And if we don't accept the abundance that we deserve for that type of work, then we can't do that type of work. So you have to be unapologetic about your abundance. Oh, I have chills. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really nice feedback loop here on this on this podcast. I like you guys. <laughs> well, you know I'm your spirit junkie soul sister. I'm like, give me more, Gabby. Like, <laughs> I am your avatar. Like, I am the person that will follow everything avatar. you do. <laughs> also, that's adorable. Well, it's well this, is, this is something that I personally have struggled with myself in accepting abundance for my talents. I always, mm -hmm. I, I think there was some sort of programming running through my head where if I was good enough, it would just happen. And if it didn't happen, then I wasn't good enough. And I've had a lot of meditations and journalings about that very kind of thought process. And like, mm -hmm. why is that in my head? I want to do what I enjoy. I watched a father work a job that he always said he never liked. And so that kind of threw me to go to my edge and, tell, and say, no, I am going to be brave and I'm going to choose something that I really enjoy. And then when it didn't show up in the way I thought it would, doubted it and thought, well, maybe I'm not meant to do this for mm -hmm. money. So, Maybe I'm not meant to. Maybe I'm not good enough. Who yeah, am I? Yeah. 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 And all of that is always based on the stories that we hear and we experience as children. It's just always the case. You know, it's like we get these stories from our family and our parents and they become ingrained in our being and our, and our belief systems. And it's our job to have a quantum shift around those stories. 
because ultimately and inevitably they will become our stories. And then we have to grow into them and accept that they are what we've attracted them because we chose them and we accepted them as our own. And then we have to do our part to change them. And that takes effort and that takes a lot of a lot of work. It's a huge topic I've taken on in my bigger training, the Spirit Junkie Masterclass. It's a huge topic of helping people here that heal their financial fears because it's something that holds people back from sharing their gifts and, and, and serving in a bigger way. And so there's, there's a lot of specific steps to take in claiming your abundance and changing your story, your financial story. And so the video that comes out today, the three steps to own your confidence and get into action now you can watch that at foodhealsnation.com slash Gabby. And Gabby, you're going to reveal three steps to truly own your confidence and get into action now. Can you give us a preview? Absolutely. So this video is beautiful. I mean, it's all about really gaining that greater sense of awareness of your confidence and understanding where your confidence truly lies. And it's helping people connect to their purpose. And they'll teach you how to to really own your own transformational experience and how to put that out in a authentic way. And I'm going to reveal my three steps to truly owning your confidence. And that is a, a step-by-step process in really stepping in and claiming your voice and really owning your voice, really accepting your own transformational experience as your expertise I think a lot of people see these experiences that they have as just something that happened to them. But actually, these experiences that we have make us an expert in that area because we've gone through them. Whether it be, you know, we healed, like this summer, I healed my acid reflux. And I walk, literally, I could walk around like I am an expert in healing acid reflux. If anyone has a problem, which maybe people are listening, they do, I'm happy to share some tips today. But literally, like, I, I believe I'm an expert because I suffered in severely suffered with gastritis and acid reflux and I healed it and I'm free of it now. And so I can say safely that I'm, I know more about this than my doctor, you know, (laughs) my doctor's like, you need to write a book about this, you know, because I just, I really, I really lived it. So by living these experiences makes us an expert in these areas. I believe that not necessarily that we could be like a heart surgeon tomorrow, but, but in general, when we go through something, we can share about it with, with a lot of authenticity and confidence. And that's where that confidence begins to become our own. Absolutely. And one of the things that you say that really resonates with me is be unapologetic about who you are. And Mm -hmm. for me, what that's meant is Susie and I have done so much work on nutrition and holistic healing. I know that I know more than 80% of the doctors out there. And I can say that with no problem. I would agree with you. Yeah. Not that I want to be your doctor that you come to, but I would rather refer you to someone like a, you know, naturopath or, you know, there's so many healing modalities. We don't have to get into all of them, but I will be the reference that anyone can come to and I can send them somewhere to someone that can help them because we have heard countless story after countless story about Western medicine failing, holistic healing, spirituality, changing your diet, changing people's lives. And so that's all we're going to preach. And I'm unapologetic about that. And I don't care what people think of me anymore, like I used to. Go, girl. I feel that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I might care a little bit sometimes. But in general, 85% of me don't get a I might care a little bit sometimes. That's good. That's all good. Well, I have to be honest. So can we talk about the acid reflux? Because we have a lot of um, Food Heals Nation listeners who are suffering from something and trying to overcome it. And I don't think we really talked about that specifically on the podcast before. So we would love to hear your journey of healing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Last summer, I was going through a very, very, very difficult time. I was dealing with recalling traumatic memories from my past. I was, I had, I had a very, very devastating fight with a very close friend that kind of changed and just maybe ended the friendship a bit for a while. I I was going through a real shit storm to Mm -hmm. be honest with you guys. And I ultimately like wasn't necessarily even paying attention to my eating habits because when I was dealing with these feelings and memories I'd never really recognized before, all my old patterns came up and also I was in a very very stressed state. Mm -hmm. So I was in this high stress state, which obviously messes with your acid, your stomach acid. And then simultaneously having strange eating habits, old eating habits of like 
not really eating much all day because I was busy. But then when I sat down to a meal, I would eat so much more than I needed to because it was right when I'd sit down when it was when you'd calm down. Yes. And I was so uncomfortable in that space of calm because I was just so afraid to feel the feelings that were coming up that I was stuffing those feelings and eating very fast and eating way too much. And then I'd be full from these meals and I would go and I would fall asleep and I would sleep on this full stomach. And these three things, stress, eating too fast, also eating very acidic foods like tomatoes and onions and meat and things that were just like causing, you know, would be causing reflux. And even I was eating a lot of those foods Mm -hmm. and then going to sleep are like the three worst things you could do to like create heartburn, reflux and acid in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Or, or not necessarily, sometimes even acid reflux comes from not enough acid producing in the stomach. So I want to be clear about that. But it's creating an environment where your microbiome gets all screwed up. Beyond that, going to sleep before you digest, you're in this horizontal state. So your food will literally come up. I know it sounds disgusting, but, and that's what heartburn is. It's like, it's your esophageal sphincter. You're in that lying down space. The food isn't fully digested. So it goes backwards. Right. That's why you're supposed to take a walk after you eat. You're not supposed to to literally not go to sleep or lie down for three hours after a meal. And you absolutely should talk, could, should go for a walk and make your dinner, your lightest meal. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wasn't doing was I wasn't chewing. So that was a big major no-no. I was literally just inhaling food. Yeah. Uh, so, so once again, here are the things that you do that create reflux. Some of some of them. Uh, one of them was that I, I had gastritis, which came from all the stress. It also came from some of the foods that I was eating, like coffee on an empty stomach and a lot of tomatoes, and a lot of tomatoes and tomato sauces and raw garlic and onions and and a lot of raw foods. And so ultimately, I really messed up my stomach lining, but mainly it came from the stress. Mm -hmm. And then to top it off, not chewing, overeating and going to sleep. So let's just everybody kind of check, are you doing any of those things? And if if you have reflux, and even if you don't have reflux, don't do those things because you will get <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so like, let's just avoid that all, at, all, at all costs because it is the most uncomfortable thing in the world and literally you can't eat. So it's a terrible, terrible experience. And so then I started to get these heartburn symptoms and I was like, what the hell is this? And which led into reflux. I was on vacation with my family. My father-in-law is a uh, cardiologist. And so I come from this these in-laws that are that are all very, very Western medicine approach. And mm-hmm. I was brought up homeopathic with a much different approach to healing. Mm-hmm. So they're all saying, go take these PPIs and go take some medication. And I'm reading all these functional medicine blogs and like hearing these stories about like, you know, no, never take the PPIs. They're going to lower your acid, your acid in your stomach. And that's going to create all these big problems later in your life. And to be honest with you, that was the wrong approach. Mm-hmm. I needed to take the medicine Mm -hmm. because it had gotten so severe. Now, they're not wrong. The functional doctors are not wrong in that when you take these PPIs, um, proton pump inhibitors, you take these acid blockers for an extended period of time, I'm talking like seven months or more, you know, or even a year or more, that's when it starts to affect the acid in your stomach and it lowers the acid in your stomach so much that it affects your digestion and then later can create osteoporosis or other issues. Okay. Uh-huh. So the reason that the, that, that the functional guys are going to be down on proton pump inhibitors is when you take them for an extended period of time, it creates other problems. Okay. Uh-huh. But when you are inflamed and you have gastritis and you get to the point where you cannot breathe, which was the case for me, I couldn't breathe. Oh my God. I sleep through the night I would be up all night long with reflux. I couldn't sleep unless I was sitting up straight. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat anything. It was so, so severe, you guys, that when you get to the place where it starts to, where if it's been seven days or more and it has not gone away, go to a doctor and if they prescribe you a PPI, take it and take it for maybe even a month, Mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, maybe you can get away with the, you know, seven day program. If you need it more, take it. And that was the big miss for me. And this is why I like being here because it's like we can talk about the balance of these things, okay? And so what did I do? I got so severely sick because I didn't take anything. And I was doing all the holistic things, but not not putting the fire out. 
because mine was so severe. Mm-hmm. And I believe that if you don't have a severe case of reflux, you can absolutely go like, you know, do these holistic things that I'll tell you and they'll work for you. But if it starts to get severe, if it lasts more than a week and it's not gone away, go to the doctor and really consider what I'm going to suggest now. Okay. What on the guys? In my case, it got so severe that I was on 40 milligrams of Nexium, which is a tremendous amount of acid blocker. But that's I could anything less wasn't working, and so I had to put the fire out. I was going on the Universe Has Your Back book tour. I was like, fire's got to go out, okay? But I wasn't going to just take the meds and not heal the problem. Yes, because I'm going to heal the root cause condition, and taking the fire off the flame, you know, was going to help me heal the condition. All right, so. I took the PPIs and then I gave myself a very, very beautiful journey of healing my gut, healing my gut flora, waking up in the morning first, obviously I had no coffee, no, nothing acidic. I was just like taking all acid off the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then simultaneously, um, that was the big diet change, like anything acidic, like any, like raw garlic, um, raw onions, tomato sauce, coffee, like all that stuff off the table, clean that up. And then I went every morning would have my apple cider vinegar with water to sort of realkalize and also deal, you know, kind of get your digestive enzymes going. And then I would do a ginger tea and I would follow that by a protein shake. And then I would, in that protein shake, use a very beautiful ingredient called L-glutamine powder. Mm -hmm. And L-glutamine powder rebuilds your gut lining. And so I really just just threw down with L-glutamine powder multiple times a day as prescribed by my functional medicine doctor. I did a stool test and figured out that I also had some some issues with some, I don't even know if it was like, it wasn't necessarily candida, but some issues that I had to deal with bacteria wise. And I took these vitamins for that. And then I started taking digestive enzymes with every single meal. I was taking digestive bitters before every meal. I was using a product called DHL, which is a almost like a licorice, chewable licorice, what, right before I ate to help me digest. So my digestion became my number one priority. And I also started to chew my food more than I ever had before, drink a lot of ginger juices, um, no more bubbly water because that was going to affect my, my digestion as well. And really, I ate a lot of small meals throughout the day. I did this entire protocol while simultaneously being on these medic on the medication. And then after four months of being on the meds, I started feeling better and I wanted to get off. And this is the key. When you get off this medication, you have to get off of it slowly. Sure. Because it's like any medication, if you just jump right off of it, you know, you can just have a flare up. So you have to go slow. So I went from 40 milligrams every day to 20 milligrams every day. And then I went from the next week, I went 20 milligrams every other day. And then the next week, I went every three days. And the next week, I went every five days. And then I went every seven days. And uh, Allison, when I was with you at Masterclass Level 2 was when I was actually like at the point where I was only taking it once a week. Oh, okay. Wow. And, yeah. So and you seemed seemed in perfect health at that point. So I was. I had actually <laughs> healed was at the point where I was only taking it once a week. And then I went down to nothing. So I think that was the last week that I took one pill. And knock on wood, haven't taken anything since, um, but have to stay very mindful because I feel 100% better now, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I can still get into those old habits of like eating tomato sauce and feeling sick from it. And so just having to be really conscious of the, of the choices I make. So if you are someone that's, that's dealing with acid reflux, I really hope this helped you. Um, Don't be afraid to take the medication, but also know that you need to also wean, you know, wean off of it as quickly as possible and do all these other things to heal your gut. Because reflux, people say, oh, you have a, a weak acid, es- esophageal sphincter. That's a bunch of bullshit. You have a gut issues, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. It's a gut issue. And the gut is so complicated. Like certain things can be wrong and people will, will take something to maybe mask the symptoms or take a Tums or whatever that will eventually later lead to bigger problems. But there's so it's so long, first of all. Our digestive system is what? Over like... I don't know, 26, 30 feet or something like that? Shit, I don't know. It's really long. (laughs) (laughs) And there's a lot of different environments, right? Like a lot of little things can go wrong. So I love that you did both because you didn't say I'm going to throw one or only one or the other. You you made it work for you. And getting a really good probiotic is a really important element as well. Uh, I I take a lot of supplements, but these were really important ones. Um, So the the, the glutamine, the bitters, the digestive bitters, the DHL, the – the uh, ginger, I mean, the acidophilus, like all of it is just, it's so crucial. Uh, the apple cider vinegar in the morning, you do that throughout the day. 
but then, you know, take the meds if you need the meds. The most important thing to understand is don't, don't not do it. Like I was the extreme story. You know, people always say, oh, everyone was on all this medication. I was like not taking the medication and it really screwed me up. And we're not anti-medication for short periods of time. No. We're really anti-medication when they say, you must be on this Forever. pill for the rest of your life yeah. and there's no right. other way and blah, blah, blah. Right. That's what we're not a proponent. And, and I would say, like, my gastro doctor was like, let's get off this in four months. That's our goal. Let's That's great. And, and, you know, and it was great. And finally, once I came to my, my functional medicine doctor and told him how bad things got, he was like, yes, get on that medication. Use that medication. And we, you know, let's get you off in the next four months. And that was our goal. And we did it, you know. So there's, there's definitely both doctors could really prescribe to that goal, you know? And also talking about how we eat. Like I also used to eat huge bites and chew, chew, swallow. I stress eat still sometimes. And I'm, I'm, for myself right now, I'm focusing on only eating when I'm eating, meaning I'm not reading a book. I'm mm-hmm. not on my phone. The TV mm-hmm. is off. I'm not, you know, I'm mindful focusing, eating. I'm mindful eating. Yeah. How we eat is almost as important as what we eat. So I true. I think it's more important. Do you? What- I really, 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 really do. Like, I can tell you right now, if I eat a slice of pizza slowly, I will feel so much better than I eat, eat a huge bowl of vegetables fast. Like, I can tell you that right now. And do you bless your food? Yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of my healing path, which was like, beca- like getting comfortable with my feelings enough so that I could eat slowly. And so I had to, I had no other choice but to pray before I ate because I had to pray to, to honor my feelings. Mm. And so I sat at my table and I'd say, thank you, God, for helping me honor how, what I'm feeling right now and helping me really go slow with what's coming up. Because that time of day, dinner time, would be when I would really just have to be faced with my feelings. And uh, it's, it was something I dealt with for a long time. Your story is not unique. Can't everyone relate to that? Mm-hmm. You're you're stressed out. You're eating too fast. Then all of a sudden, dinner time is quiet, and everything comes up. And yeah, eating can be a way to numb ourselves, numb it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so let's not let that. Let's not be a victim to that. You know, we can make a choice every time we eat. We always talk about making a choice three times a day as to what you put on your plate. And let's add to that now and make a choice about how you're going to eat that food. How are you going to feel about that food? How are you going to feel about your day? And cut the distractions, just like Susie said. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is so important. And what if Gabby was eating vegetables all day, but the way she was eating it was what caused the... Because I know you're healthy. Gabby doesn't even eat sugar, people, okay? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't eat a lot of things that are necessarily bad for you, but I still wasn't eating mindfully, mm-hmm. right? So... I was eating like quality food and obviously not eating any sugar and I obviously don't drink alcohol and but I was food combining the wrong way I and mean, there's a lot of things you have to become conscious of and so when it comes to do, to your digestion chewing is the first thing making sure that you are taking the right supplements like the all the right probiotics and and really rebuilding your gut health I also took a lot of collagen powders and I would make gelatin to rebuild the gut. I really did all of it, you guys. And uh, I tried to stick to it too. I take the glutamine every day. And I mean, you don't have to be on that for every day. That, that can end at a certain period of that time. That was one I didn't know about. I didn't know. I I know of L-glutamine powder. I just didn't know it was good for the gut. Oh, it's so good for the gut. Great. Well, yeah. we're, thank you so much for sharing your healing protocol. And we'll put this all in the show notes of Gabby's episode at foodhealsnation.com. So if anyone wants to look at what she did, it will all be there for so you. So little did they know they were going to get a whole acid reflux. <laughs> hey. I'm- passionate about it and it plagues people you yeah. know yeah a lot of people I've suffer from that house and like the guy that lived here left a lot of his like old like like pills and things in one of the drawers and literally he had like every ppi every tums everything i was like oh my god poor guy I'm like, I need uh. to do. <laughs> like you know it's, it plagues people and if you ask anyone they're like yeah i'm on an acid blocker and it's like you don't have to live on that forever you know, so we can help people. No, absolutely. I'm glad we went on this detour. I know we didn't plan to talk about it, but this is how the podcast goes. Okay. Speaking of your house, there's a story that I'm obsessed with. Susie, have you gotten to this part in the universe has your back about the owl? No. Okay. Gabby, would you give us a little teaser about the owl and how it helped you find your home? And then I will tell you how I'm using the owl in my own life. And I see owls everywhere now. Oh, good, good. Um, so 
the home that I selling this week, actually, I, I went into contract with that house. I bought a new house. I like sold the other one so quickly. Lots of, lots of good magic around that house. Mm -hmm. Um, but I manifested this home. I found this home. Um, and there's a whole pre story. You got to read the book to get the whole story. I was really struggling towards the time of closing on the house. This is the first house my husband and I had ever purchased. And we were kind of challenged by it. And we were feeling like anxious and nervous. And so I started asking for a sign to tell me that this was my home. And I asked for an owl. And in the book, I'm not going to give it all away, but the owl showed up in the most magnificent, mind-blowing ways that it would make a believer out of anyone. Yes. yes. So, yeah. So, I mean, people love that chapter because it gives you so much hope and it gives you so much faith in the universe. And my story is your story. Once you start asking for a sign, you begin to receive the guidance that you ask for. That was my experience. And I continue to get those signs every day. And you know, even today, like something very funny happened where I was like stressing out about the the like blood results. And like five minutes later, I get an email from my publisher introducing me to that guy, Anthony Williams, the medical medium. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I was like, I've been wanting to talk to him for so long. It was like the universe just hooked me up. It's like, here I am freaking out about something health related that like, I can't even control and who knows if it's even an issue because I drank butter before my test. So, you know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> then the universe is like, bam, here's the medical medium to come talk to you. You know what I mean? So it's like, I just, I have to look at those moments and, and like not laugh at the timing and just be like, this is divine. Like these things do not come a date sooner than they need to. Yeah. And yeah. just accepting, accepting the grace of it all. So Food Heals Nation, read The Universe Has Your Back. You can also listen to it like Susie and I did on, you know, your iPhone or what kind, whatever kind of phone you have on your computer. And you'll hear the owl story. And it's really just about asking for a sign and then receiving that sign. And so since reading that book, I've been asking for my owl. And I told Dan, my husband, about the owl. Now we freaking see owls everywhere, okay? We see owls at the airport. We see owls in Las Vegas. <laughs> like, it's crazy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and we've used other symbols as well. And so now I've asked for feathers, all these other things. And I see them. And I'm like, oh, my God, it works. So it made a believer out of me. Yeah, yeah. That's a fun chapter. I think people will really appreciate it. Yay. Okay. So let's end on a little bit more about Spirit Junkie Masterclass and what you've created for spiritual entrepreneurs. We've got this free training coming up. I think that that's definitely the greatest way to start and kind of get an introduction. And it's out today, as you mentioned. So really gaining the confidence and stepping into your abundance and getting your, your word out and really learning how to be seen and heard with the great work that you're here to share. And then as you've gone through my actual Spirit Junkie Masterclass training, which is a training for people who identify as mindful, wellness, spiritual entrepreneurs who want to really get, elevate their, their confidence and live their purpose and be abundant doing the work that they feel moved by. And that is a, a huge part of my mission is to really uh, empower healers and leaders and and coaches and yogis and, and wellness gurus and people like you guys just doing this amazing wellness work in the world <clears throat> to just get to just empower people like yourselves to just get out and continue to do work just like this. Just get the message out, be unapologetic about it, earn for it, make it your mission and be really proud of the, the, the stance and the choices that you make in your life. And so that's, that's what the masterclass, the Spirit Junkie Masterclass is all about. And I think the best way for somebody to begin to learn these lessons is to go to that URL that you mentioned and check out the free videos and really just dive in today and get more from me. There's more than just this brilliance about acid reflux, you all. <laughs> <laughs> really? There's, a, there's so much more. I'm not just an expert in acid reflux. <laughs> I know. Well, today we've only scratched the surface. So I know that there's so much more that you teach because I've been your student for over a year now. And, you know, years before that, just reading your books. And then I found Spirit Junkie Masterclass last year, last summer, about a year ago. And that started another journey for myself in terms of another level of healing myself, another level of healing my trauma, another level of realizing and 
understanding that my trauma and my story is here to heal and help others. And it's my responsibility to talk about it. And it's my responsibility to go out into the world and help people. It's not just a dream or something to go, oh, can I make money doing this? I'm scared. It's no, you have to. And you have to stop doing everything else that's not serving you or serving the world. So that was my lesson from Spirit Junkie Masterclass. And many more, of course. But It's a good one. The main one. It's a All big right. one. So go to foodhealsnation.com to get your free video, The Three Steps to Own Your Confidence and Get Into Action Now. And then there'll be two more videos, The Three Major Blocks to Your Abundance and How to Fix Them. The video number three is the number one way to stand out and make an impact doing what you love, which I feel like that's what... Spirit Junkie Masterclass 1 and 2 were all about for me. And Gabby, let's just talk about the judgment detox. Tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up. Mm, Yeah. So this is my next book. It'll be out in January, I believe, if not sooner. Judgment Detox. And the subtitle is Release the Beliefs that Hold You Back from Living a Better Life. Couldn't be more clear. So I'm very, very proud of this book. It's a extremely important message that has to come out right now at this time. Uh, We're living in very divisive times where it's required of us to begin to recognize the weights that we judge. I judge every day, far and wide, but I also know how to heal it. And I practice the principles that I preach every single day. And as a result of practicing those principles, I live a much, much happier life. I loved writing this book. I wrote this book in four months. In the four months that I wrote it, it felt so wonderful mm-hmm. to just be in the truth of that of that book. So great. Beautiful. So look for the Judgment Detox coming out hopefully in January. If you're looking for some great reading right now, my two favorites are Spirit Junkie, Add More Ink to Your Life, three favorites, and the universe has your back. Gabby's got many more bestsellers, so check them out. Gabby, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Such a wonderful time to be with you. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Gabby. Don't forget her free training starts today. You can access the very first video by going to foodhealsnation.com slash Gabby. I love this video. It's called The Three Steps to Own Your Confidence and Get Into Action Now. And who doesn't need help with confidence? I think we could all use a little bit. We all could. And I've struggled with that as well. Um, And that's my favorite part is just the three steps to truly own your confidence. And throughout my life, this has been kind of an up and down where I'm like uber confident. And then I'm like, who am I? But I truly, truly believe that if we believe fully in who we are and just stop giving so many fucks okay about what anyone else thinks that is when we shine and that's when we overcome and that's when we can have the shift and take our lives to the next level yeah and I think it's also just a matter of being human like everybody I think goes through that up and down with their confidence and I think you heal it when you get to that point of where yeah you don't give a fuck (laughs) to quote you you can quote me anytime so check out video number one at foodhealsnation.com slash gabby and keep listening to the spirit junkie podcast series because we are going to be providing a ton of bonus content and extra episodes for you throughout the month of june including step-by-step guidance from spirit junkies on how to start or grow your spiritual or wellness business infuse your work with your spiritual beliefs get noticed by the media and be abundant doing what you love And we'll also be talking about how to turn your wellness blog into a business, publish a book, lead a talk, and create digital courses so you can create passive revenue for your great work. Who doesn't love that? I know. And we know there are a lot of budding podcasters out there, so we'll also be discussing how to start a podcast that will explode your business and get your message out into the world. Just like we did. Just like we did. (laughs) And of course, you'll hear healing stories from people who have completely changed their lives, mind, body, and spirit. So keep listening because on June 23rd, we're going to reveal how you can join the Spirit Junkie Tribe, take Spirit Junkie Masterclass with Gabby, and all the bonus courses we are offering as well. And our next episode is this Thursday, a bonus episode. It's with Carla Kieber. She's going to talk about manifesting money, something we haven't really talked about. So I'm super excited to share this episode with you. And Carla's goal is to support you in growing your wealth and growing yourself so that you are living a life of true financial and emotional freedom. So stay tuned for that, Food Heals Nation. 
These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.